welcome to the next lecture in the fundamental of electronics we were discussing the semiconductors and in this particular lecture we will focus our discussion on mass action law and we will try to determine the conductivity of the semiconductors under various doping conditions so we know that under thermal equilibrium the product of the number of holes and the electrons is constant so whenever we have the number of electrons and number of holes if we take the product of that under thermal equilibrium condition that will remain constant and it is independent of the amount of donor and acceptor impurity doping because the temperature remains the same so we can mathematically write that number of electrons and number of holes product is equal to ni square where n is the number of free electrons present per unit volume of the semiconductor material p is the number of holes present per unit volume whereas ni is the intrinsic concentration of the semiconductors while considering the conductivity of the doped semiconductors only the dominant majority charge carriers have to be considered so in extrinsic semiconductors we will focus only on the majority charge carriers when we need to find the conductivity of the extrinsic semiconductors let us calculate the charge densities in doped semiconductors if the semiconductor is n type then in that case the number of electrons that is the concentration of the electron is given by nd plus pn where nd is nothing but the concentration of the donor atoms because it is n type semiconductor we will have the donor atoms present in the semiconductor and the number of holes pn will not be much more and it is only the donors which are in the majority so the number of holes will be given from the mass action law as ni square by number of electrons which is equal to ni square by number of donor atoms we will see that this whole concentration is very less and majority of the concentration is only because of the donor materials the p type semiconductor if we write the equation then that is the summation of the acceptor impurity so we have the acceptor atoms which are the acceptor impurity atoms and the number of holes present and this is generally governed by the number of acceptor impurity atoms because the number of holes from the mass action law can be given as ni square by the number of holes and this is also equal to ni square by na in one of the problem which we are going to deal we will discuss that these concentration of the holes and the electrons will be much much less and the donor and the acceptor impurity atoms are the one which will be dominating in the extrinsic semiconductors so when we have the extrinsic semiconductors either n type or p type then the conductivity of that particular semiconductor first we will calculate the n type and then move to the p type so the conductivity is given by q n into mu where q is nothing but the charge of the electrons we can say that the number of electrons is nothing but the donor atoms which are present in n type semiconductor because the number of electrons in the n type semiconductor is because of the donor impurity atoms whereas in p type semiconductor the it is because of the acceptor impurity atoms so we can write that charge multiplied with na so here we have the na as the number of acceptor impurity atoms in p type whereas nd is the number of donor impurity atoms in n type semiconductor that will define the conductivity of the particular semiconductors generally if the concentration of donor atoms added to a p type semiconductor exceeds the concentration of acceptor atom that is nd is very very greater than na then we can convert the p type to the n type so p type and n type semiconductors can be converted from one form to the another 
by controlling the number of acceptor and the donor impurity atoms. Similarly, if we want to convert the n-type semiconductor to p-type semiconductor, we have to take the number of acceptor impurity atoms very very more greater than the donor impurity atoms. Let us solve one problem to understand the theory that we have discussed to find the conductivity of a silicon atom. Four parts are there in the question. In the first part, we have to deal with finding the intrinsic condition at a room temperature of 300 Kelvin. That is, this is in the thermal equilibrium condition. When we have the donor impurity of 1 into 10 to the power 8, what is the conductivity of silicon? When we have the acceptor impurity 1 in 5 into 10 to the power 7, what is the conductivity of silicon? Now, when both the impurities are present, what will happen to the conductivity of silicon? Given that the intrinsic concentration of silicon at a temperature of 300 Kelvin is 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube, that is in the volume, mu n and mu p for the holes, for the number of electrons and the holes values are given, that is 1300 centimeter square by volt second and 500 centimeter square by volt second. The total number of silicon atom per centimeter cube is 5 into 10 to the power 22. So these data we are going to use to find the conductivity of silicon under different condition. So first is the intrinsic semiconductor and then we have both n-type and p-type semiconductor and when both the impurities are present, let us see what happened. So under intrinsic condition, under thermal equilibrium, we have the number of holes is equal to number of electrons, which is equal to Ni. Then in that case, we can put it only Ni in the equation of the conductivity and 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 is the charge of a particular electron. The mu n and mu p values are already given in the problem which we can substitute and find the conductivity of the silicon atom under intrinsic condition. Whereas when the silicon atoms are doped because of the donor impurity atoms, we have to find what is the value of Nd because the number of silicon atoms are 5 into 10 to the power 22 and the doping we have been given as 1 in 10 to the power 8. So the number of donor atoms is 5 into 10 to the power 14 per centimeter cube. We know that in n-type semiconductor it is the majority are the donor atoms. So from the mass action law the number of holes we can calculate as Ni square by Nd. So this is the number of holes which shows that the number of holes is may be neglected because the number of holes is very very less than the number of electrons. So here we can see that here we have the electrons as 5 into 10 to the power 14 where the number of holes is very less that is 0 0.46 into 10 to the power 6. Hence the conductivity of the n-type semiconductor is generally governed by the donor impurity atoms and the value of mu n is already given. We are not going to take the mu p into account. That we need the conductivity as 0 0.104 Siemens per centimeter. So we can see that if we compare the intrinsic concentration with the n-type semiconductor, the conductivity of n-type semiconductor is more than the intrinsic semiconductor. It means the doping has surely increase the conductivity of the semiconductor. Now, if the acceptor impurity atoms are there, so the number of acceptor impurity atoms we will be calculating that is 1 in 5 into 10 to the power 7, where the total number of silicon atoms are 5 into 10 to the power 22, that gives 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube. Here we will substitute the number of holes as the number of acceptor impurity atoms. And from the mass action law, we can find what is the number of electrons which will be depending on Ni square by Na, Na being 10 to the power 15. So the number of electrons in p-type semiconductor is very less compared to the number of holes or the acceptor impurity atom. So p is very very greater than n, hence the conductivity sigma will be dependent on 
only the acceptor impurity atoms which is the host mu p value so that gives 0.08 siemens per centimeter again if we compare this value with the intrinsic one the conductivity has increased compared to the pure silicon atom now when both the impurities are present we have to decide whether na is more than nd or nd is more than na in the present situation in this numerical we have na more than nd hence we will find the number of acceptor impurity atoms will be present and hence the semiconductor will be generally p type semiconductor where we will substitute the value of na dash the subtraction of na minus nd so that is 5 into 10 to the power 14 this 5 into 10 to the power 14 is the number of acceptor impurity atoms which is actually present and the semiconductor is p type semiconductor so the conductivity is 0 0.04 in this case if we compare from the previous case the conductivity has come down because both electrons and holes contributions are there because of acceptor and donor impurity atoms in this particular lecture we have focused our discussion to find the conductivity of the semiconductors and we were discussing in this lecture series the various topics on semiconductors still one or more two topics are remaining and that will complete the semiconductors thank you for now see you in the next lecture